Professor Lakshman Watavala, founder and president of the Institute of Chartered Professional Managers, Dr. Samantha Ratnaika, governing council member of the CPM, uh, Mr. Suresh Dimel, chairman Export Development Board, Mr. Salia Peris, President's Council and President-elect of the Bar Association of Sri Lanka, other distinguished invitees, ladies and gentlemen. It gives me great pleasure to address you on this occasion of CPM celebrating its annual convocation of 2021. The topic on which I have been asked to address is governance and ethics in management. Now, what is governance? Governance literally means the act, act or manner of controlling or ruling the affairs of an organization. Ethics, on the other hand, refers to the science of morals in human conduct. Management means the professional administration of business concerns, institutions, public undertakings, etc. How does governance and ethics help a manager to control or rule a business organization or a public undertaking. Governance and ethics are of paramount importance in management because they are the fundamental pillars which successful management is based on. Governance can be simply defined as having a set and agreed structure that is established to enable sound and consensus decision making, ensure accountability, and control the behavior of an entity as a whole. Now that I am in the banking sector, little bit involved in the banking sector, I would like to give you the expression or the meaning of corporate governance. Corporate governance is concerned with holding the balance between the economic and social goals and between individual and communal goals. The governance framework is there is to encourage the efficient use of resources and equally to require accountability for the stewardship of those resources. The aim is to align as nearly as possible the interests of individuals, corporations, and society. Governance is also important to ensure that there are checks and balances in the system, even to those who hold the highest power in an institution, so that the decisions and actions taken are not harmful or beneficial to a segment of stakeholders. So how does a manager administer the functions of his institution? The effective performance of a manager at all levels requires, in the first instance, the maintenance of public confidence. All managers, at whatever level, should act with courtesy and respect towards the public. They are expected at all times to avoid indecorous, intemperate, and offensive conduct, and to act with a degree of sensitivity, self-control, restraint, and dignity in their dealings with the public. In disposing of matters promptly, efficiently, and fairly, a manager must demonstrate due regard 
for the rights of the parties to be heard and to have issues resolved without unnecessary cost or delay. A manager shall not, in the performance of his duties, by words or conduct, manifest bias or prejudice towards any person or group on irrelevant grounds. He shall strive to be aware of and to understand diversity in society and differences arising from various sources including but not limited to race, religion, national origin, caste, sex, disability, age, marital status, social and economic status, etc. To ensure fairness and reasonableness in all his activities, the dealings should be above board. Nothing should be done which gives an impression of favoritism or bias. While fairness is a fundamental principle of good administration, it is a rule to ensure that the vast power is not abused but properly exercised. Therefore, it is imperative to maintain a high benchmark of honesty, accountability, and good conduct. The rules of natural justice apply as much to proceedings in courts of law as to proceedings before authorities elsewhere. Paul Jackson, in his book titled Natural Justice, at page 6, noted thus, I quote, the two principles which preeminently are generally thought to be necessary to guarantee that the law or any body of rules is applied impartially and objectively and hence justly are that no man should be judged without a hearing and that every judge must be free from bias or as they are often cited in the form of Latin tags within inverted commas, audi alterem partem and Nemo Judex in Re Sua. It is not possible to produce an exhaustive list of the rules of natural justice in the formal sense or of the requirements of the rules because the rules of natural justice are means to an end and not an end in themselves. This quotation by Paul Jackson equally applies to managers also, who are required to decide on conflicting claims or when determining conflicting priorities of two equitable interests. Justice Desai, in the case of Nakara versus Union of India, 1983 1 SCC 305, made the following observations with regard to the natural justice. I quote, the rule of natural justice owed their origin to ethical and moral standards. Is there any doubt that they have become an integral and inseparable parts of rule of law of which any civilized society is proud? Can anyone be bold enough to assert that ethics and morality are outside the field of legal formulation. Socio-economic justice stems from the concept of social morality coupled with abhorrence for economic exploitation. The advancing society converts in course of time moral and ethical code into enforceable legal formulations." Unquote. Fairness, good conduct, and natural justice always subserve the need of justice and equitable maxims denote the same. The next area I would like to touch is efficiency in the service. Efficiency and effectiveness are the basic concepts which cannot be sacrificed at any cost. 
it is fashionable to say, and there is perhaps some truth in it, that from generation to generation, there is a deterioration in efficiency in all walks of life. Nevertheless, the world has been going forward, and only parties whose personal interest is affected forecast a doom on account of progressive deficiency, inefficiency. Frequent litigations against the authorities in administration wipe out loyalty, reverence, and the sense of discipline and and the sense of discipline, and substitute those by anger and disrespect. In the process, fellow feeling is lost, the sense of brotherhood vanishes. Next resultant of all of this is deprivation of the efficiency to serve the society. Integrity and efficiency are the hallmarks of any service anywhere and they are what are contemplated and aimed at by the wide range of rules. The interest to be served is always be public interest and not individual interest. The next area to be stressed is on governance. On governance is the principles of public accountability and transparency. The managers occupy a seat of power. Every action or decision of managers must be founded on a sound, transparent, and well-defined policy. Democracy nurtures and clearly welcomes transparency. Sabrawal CJ, in the case of Nair versus Union of India, 2006, 7 SCC 1, observed thus, I quote, if secrecy becomes a source of corruption, then sunlight and, and transparency have the capacity to remove it, unquote. The managers should therefore bear in mind that in a system governed by the rule of law, there is nothing like absolute or unbridled power exercisable at the whims and fancies of the repository of such power. There is nothing like a power without any limits or constraints. This is so even when a court or other authority may be vested with white discretionary power, for even discretion has to be exercised only with well-recognized and sound juristic principles with a view to promoting transparency and aiding equality. Now, if I touch upon on ethics, ethics, on the other hand, are moral standards that govern a person's or an entity's behavior. Business ethics is too often conceived as a set of impositions and constraints, obstacles to business behavior. However, in reality, they are not restrictive, but a vital component that, safeguard the re that safeguards the reputation of an institution. Ethics are all about developing trust, maintaining it fruitfully, so that the institution flourishes profitably and maintains a good reputation. Trust leads to predictability and efficiency of the business. The balance of pursuing market opportunities while maintaining accountability and ethical integrity has proved a defining challenge for business enterprise. The value of governance and ethics in management are more valid today than ever in a dynamic world with advanced technologies, sophisticated human capital, and fast-faced business environment. A corporate can be successful and profitable, but if its business does not have good governance or sound ethics, the business is not going to be sustainable. The primary objective of a corporation is to increase shareholder value. Successful corporations must operate within the society. To that end, they must maintain the values and norms of the society in which they operate. It is of utmost importance that the managers ensure ethical standards in all their activities with public trust and confidence. 
while maintaining high ethical standards at all levels is important, the example of such a culture should be set by the managers so that it will influence and emulate it by the staff reporting to them. It is advisable to have a code of conduct for the managers which would apply and guide them in their workplace. The golden rule is that they must act truthfully and honestly with all stakeholder groups such as employees, customers, stakeholders, suppliers and competitors. The office of a manager is essentially a public trust. Society is therefore entitled to expect that a manager who administers an institution must be a man of high integrity, honesty, and required to have moral vigor and ethical firmness. He is required to keep more exacting standards of propriety in his conduct. Bad conduct or bad behavior of a manager therefore needs correction to prevent erosion of public confidence in the efficacy of administrative process or dignity of the institution. While acting truthfully and honestly with all stakeholder groups such as employees, customers, shareholders, suppliers and competitors, you must also observe the rules, laws and regulations in order to protect the integrity and reputation of your institution. The Constitution, being the supreme law of our country, seeks to secure to all its citizens justice, equality, and equal protection of the law. Thus, it is your paramount duty to observe the rule of law. The rule of law is the basis for the evaluation of all decisions. The supreme quality of the rule of law is fairness and legal certainty. The principle of legal legality occupies a control plan in the rule of law. Every right or privilege has to be subject to the rule of law. The rule of law principle comprises a requirement of governance according to law. The, ethic, the ethos of governance according to law requires the prerogative to be exercised in a manner which is consistent with the basic principles of fairness, certainty, and equal treatment. Article 12 of our Constitution guarantees to all persons in our country equality before the law and equal protection of the laws, which only means that persons are equally subject to law and to have the right to equal protection in similar circumstances both as regards privileges conferred and liabilities imposed by the laws. As managers, it is your responsibility to ensure equal laws have to be applied to all persons in the same situation, and there must be no discrimination between one person and another. Justice Ravindran, in the case of Sachit Bansal versus Joint Admission Board, 2017-1 SCC 157, with regard to arbitrary actions by the managers, noted thus, I quote, an action is based to be arbitrary and capricious, where a person in authority does any action based on individual discretion by ignoring prescribed rules, procedures, or law, and the action or decision is founded on prejudice or preference rather than reason or fact. To be termed as arbitrary and capricious, the action must be illogical and whimsical, something without any reasonable explanation. When an action or procedure seeks to achieve a specific objective in a bona fide manner by adopting a process which is uniform and not non-discriminatory, it cannot be described as arbitrary or capricious or mala fide, unquote. Ladies and gentlemen, if I may sum up what I have stated, in every particular instance, you are all, all of you are going to be chartered professional managers. What I would advise you is that you should be studious, thorough, 
courteous, patient, punctual, just and fair, impartial, fearless of public clamor, regardless of public pra praise, and partisan influence. You should share, observe, sorry, you should observe the principles of natural justice and administer your office in accordance with the relevant rules, regulations, laws, and deal with your appointment as a public trust. You should not allow other affairs or your private interests to interfere with the prompt and proper performance of duties, nor should you administer the manager's office for the purpose of advancing your personal ambitions or increasing your popularity. In conclusion, may I wish all the managers who are going to receive the awards and the certificates who are present here a successful term of office and a bright future in all, their, all your future endeavors. Thank you very much.